everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons. Today, I'm super excited to be joined by my Artist of the Month, Chelsea Mitchell. Chelsea, what are you going to be playing for us today? Wicked Game by Chris Isaac, and also an original called Hollywood Love Song. So we're also going to be sharing with you some advice about how to make it in the music business. These are going to be based off of the questions that I've gotten in the comments section of these videos. Following that, we'll learn a little bit more about Chelsea's plans, and uh, then we'll get to that original song. Now, I'm going to get off to the side and let uh, Chelsea play some music for you.
Okay, so let's get started um, talking a little bit about the music industry. The first question that I have here is one that I get all the time, and it's about how to find inspiration. Inspiration comes to people, I think, from many different places. For me, I find it's uh, just conversations that I've had or things that have happened to me personally. They're just the easiest to draw from because the feelings are so strong. Um, you have that kind of connection to the events and to how you felt when somebody spoke to you a certain way or you know you had to dissect whatever sentence or text message I guess in this day and age that you got um, so just kind of I think it requires a little bit of introspection sometimes overthinking um, and just really being observant not letting moments that maybe seem small pass you by. Because if you really take a closer look, you go, oh, that was like, that was a big moment in my relationship with this person. Or that conversation uh, changed my life and, and, or the course of events um, that brought me here. So I think if you just keep your eyes open, inspiration is not something you have to look for. It's just, it's everywhere. I think that's awesome. Um, I definitely, felt when I first started writing songs that I just hadn't done enough living yet. Mm -hmm. I kind of just piggybacking off what you said. And, um, and you know, when I remember being like 17, 18 years old, I hadn't even driven a car yet. I'm you know, trying to write all these Bruce Springsteen driving songs. Um, and I just felt like such a poser doing it. But the, the one thing that I definitely figured out somewhere along the line is that there's inspiration all around you in other people's lives. We all have that friend that is constantly, you know, picking up uh, fixer uppers, you know, uh, tumultuous relationships, um, and there's just stories all over the world that you can just start pulling from. So uh, don't necessarily think that all of your songwriting has to come from your own space. It can come from really any of the relationships that you have in your life uh, and any of the stories that you hear. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. Where uh, it might be a good jumping point or starting point to to think about what's happened to you personally, but um, sometimes you can even have a, a movie or a book that you read or characters that you loved that you had such empathy for that you can write their story and it means just as much. Okay, so I think we've pretty much covered how to find inspiration. Go out there in the world, think about the relationships with you, uh, don't overlook the, uh, the conversations, the experiences that you have with the people around you, um, and then indulge in other people's art. Go out, watch movies, Binge, listen to your favorite music, uh, constantly be looking for other music to listen to. Those are all helpful things. Um, okay, so then once you have all of that information and all of these ideas and all this inspiration in your gut, uh, the other question that I really commonly get is how to write a song. How to write a song. Uh, that is going to be different for everyone. I am, we were talking earlier and it seems that one of our friends just kind of sits with his guitar and plays a chord progression and records that and then will just kind of speak nonsense lyrics over it or, or sing, find some kind of melody. It doesn't matter what the words are and then later figure out what he wants to say. Um, for me, the words always come first. Uh, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely a lyrics first person and uh, Sometimes the words, or what the subject matter is, will then be my guide to how the song should sound. If it's going to be more depressing uh, topics, then I'm going to figure out different chords to play, or maybe um, uh, something, something happier will be more upbeat, or, or whatever, whatever the case may be. Actually, sometimes it's fun to do a curveball and have really depressing subject matter in like a peppy song and kind of like trick people into hearing your sad stories. Mm. <laughs> but uh, for everyone, I think it's just going to be a different process um, and it won't be the same every time either. You will have some songs or a lick or something that you have in your back pocket for like sometimes a year, two years. Six years. Six years. <laughs> and. Uh, then you will find the missing piece to your puzzle later on and be like, oh my God, that lick that I wrote 
so long ago fits perfectly into this song. You might have mutant songs where you wrote three you didn't really care about oh, and, and realized, yeah. oh, the bridge from that one, the chorus from that one, the verse from that one, it's, it's perfect together. Mm -hmm. So you just, you never know how it's going to come. If you are somebody who needs a process, um, kind of like a, a set way that you're going to, to put aside time every single day and spend half an hour you know, noodling around, or you need to you need to have a step by step kind of process for writing. Then, then do whatever works for you. Other people, you'll see scribbling on napkins, or you know, taking their phones into the bathroom and singing lines to themselves. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you have the urge to write something, I encourage you to stop what you're doing pull over to the side of the road, um, excuse yourself from the party, do whatever it takes to get that idea down because things are, are fleeting. Um, you might have a hundred different ideas come to you in a day and if you don't have a pen and paper or something to record, you might lose 99 of them. It's just uh, really important to take that moment, that um, moment of inspiration, <laughs> that you, you had previously, step See, one, all fits question together. one. Take your inspiration, when you get it, just sit and write and, and let it flow. Even if you're like, oh, that probably won't be the line that I use, just write it down. And definitely if you have the ability to record it, because you might have like the song sheet and you'll have that song running through your head the entire day and then tomorrow rolls around and you're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I have no idea how this song went. And then you'll start playing and you'll be like, that's not it and this is only half as good as it was yesterday. Um, so definitely make, make sure that you can record as much as possible. That's a really big part of the uh, kind of the, the process of growing as a musician. You can also be able to judge your mistakes uh, that way and um, be able to kind of hone the sound that you're looking for uh, through recording. So just, you know, even if it's just on your smartphone, uh, real quick, just like get it on there so that way you don't forget it. Um, let's roll into the next one. This one I get all the time, uh, how to get gigs. How'd you get your first gig? Uh, uh, my your first real gig. My first, first real, gig. real gig. I uh, started a long time ago and would play open mics constantly. Open mics, if you are a beginner, that is a great place to start meeting people. People who are probably in the same situation as you. They don't know how to get gigs. They don't know anyone in whatever scene your city has. Um, they're just kind of hoping to get their foot in the door somewhere, meet some people, and um, I don't, maybe even start a band. I've, I've met lots of different musicians and lots of different people looking for different things at open mics. Um, and then I, they'll get gigs. And then they'll get gigs, yeah. And they um, give you a gig. <laughs> I've Hopefully. met many people like asking me, like, are you looking for a band or we're looking for a singer, you know? And even if I can't help them, it's another connection. It's somebody I'll keep on my radar. Like, oh, if I meet somebody who is a bassist looking for a band, I'm gonna send them over that way. And you all just kind of become a family. I played World Cafe Live's open mic for, I think every single Monday, maybe two years straight. I just wow. went every single Monday and I just, I loved it. I met great people. Everyone was supportive and friendly, and that's how I got my first gig. I just had somebody come up to me at an open mic and ask me if I wanted to play at their coffee house, and that led to other gigs. And um, and now you play yeah. the biggest venues in Philadelphia. Some of them. Some of them. <laughs> many of them. And uh, I've been in many of those audiences and have enjoyed her performances. Um, so. Basically, it comes down to networking. If you want to get gigs, uh, you have to go to gigs, you have to get to know other musicians, um, and you have to be an active supporter of the music scene that's around you. Um, so, and that's funny because uh, the next question we have is how to find musicians to play with. I think you pretty much answered that question. Yeah, it's the more you go and support other people or um, make your presence known in whatever your scene may be, um, just the more people have you on their minds. So like, oh, that was so nice of so-and-so to come to our gig, and have you checked out their stuff online, or have you um, have you seen what they can do? Like, I always see them around supporting other people. Like, I have uh, several friends that I met just because they never stayed in on a Friday or Saturday night. They were always out, always supporting. Um, 
and uh, hustling, I guess. You gotta hustle. <laughs> um, so you're, if you're out at these gigs, uh, you have your merch table, you've got your t-shirts, you've got your stupid stickers, your buttons, your albums, all this stuff. How do you sell this stuff? Um, particularly the albums. How do you, I get a lot of questions about how to sell records, how to make money as a musician. Uh, the one thing you should know is that most musicians don't really make any money at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not really all about that. You do want to go out and have fun. But at the end of the day, if your goal is to become a professional musician, you know, you want to sell a few records, even if it's just to boost your confidence. So. Um, how do you see uh, um, kind of uh, increases in sales when it comes to records? What do you need to do? Well, I think if you're going to release a record, um, have a release show, have an official release show. Big release show. But make sure also before you play and before it's out there in the world, send it out to some blogs or some people you trust. Get some feedback, get some buzz going before it's out there. Have people talking about it before it's even um, it, on the internet or you know, available to the public because the more kind of buzz and talk and expectation, anticipation around your record that you can build, the more excited people will be to listen to it. Um, and the more excited maybe they'll be to come see your show and see the songs live and, and see what all the buzz is about. I think if you can um, support your local radio stations for sure, that doesn't mean just like asking them for favors when you need them. That means um, maybe joining, becoming a member of your you know local public radio station, volunteering for events if, mm -hmm. if you want to. It goes back to the networking thing too. It goes back to yeah. networking. All of these questions I think the most helpful thing that you can do for yourself is to be a part of the community, not just ask that the community pay attention to you or they listen to you or why why doesn't anyone come to my shows like did you go to any yeah, of their this shows is not, <laughs> seriously this is not a selfish person's business it's a lot of give and take um and most of what you're doing is going to be supporting others and then when it comes time for you know your big release show you know you're going to see a lot more faces in the crowd because you were out uh, on those Friday nights and Saturday nights supporting the, all of your friends and all the other musicians in your town. Touring also helps for selling, which I know if, for some of you this that's way down the line because you're still trying to figure out how to get gigs in your hometown or, or who to talk to, but if you're past that point and you're wondering, well, I already had my release show, I already did all this, how do I sell these albums? Um, make videos for some of them. Oh, yeah. make, make music videos, pick a song that Maybe you didn't release previously as a single and make a really cool visual companion to it. Mm -hmm. uh, create more buzz, re regenerate the interest that you had in this album that you already released and get on the road. Like make friends elsewhere, go leave your hometown and make sure that you're um, extending yourself as far as you can and sharing your music with as many people as possible. And networking with other bands elsewhere in the country is way easier than it used to be with the internet, Facebook. It's so easy just to get out there. Um, so one of the things that you can do if you're a aspiring musician right now and you're watching this video, get yourself a spreadsheet and start putting all of your contacts on there, okay? With different bands that are in different parts of, this, of the uh, country, find out what they're doing and see if you can uh, get them a gig in your hometown and then plan to visit them in their uh, hometown, okay? So you're gonna share some stomping ground with some other bands. Uh, okay, so um, wrapping things up, we have uh, how to sell albums, uh, how to build up a fan base. Well, a lot of that is definitely other musicians. Sometimes you go and play shows and you'll see like, oh yeah, actually I've played with that band, I've played with that band. A lot of the people that are in the audience are just your, uh, just your friends, your pals from the, um, the local music scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but other than that, how can you get some more people involved in music? To get more people, I think, following you and being interested in what you have coming up, um, don't shy away from social media and, you know, putting pictures up, sharing personal things about yourself. I know that's not everybody's, some people like to remain a mystery and that can be cool too, but other people um, I think are looking for music and um, a person that they can relate to, that they feel like, I could share my stories with you, mm -hmm. or I know exactly what you're talking about, or oh my gosh, I I use the same um, guitar picks as you. Just, just share little tidbits with people. Um, 
it goes beyond just being a great songwriter, a great musician. Those things, of course, are important. But if you want to build a fan base that loves and respects you and um, you love them and respect them and uh, it's 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 a give and take relationship, relationship. Mm -hmm. you got to give them a little bit if they're gonna come out pay money to see your shows make time for them after the show anybody waiting at your merch table talk with them for a little bit don't just say yep thanks for your money see mm -hmm. you later Have like a lot of hospitality be grateful mm -hmm. always be grateful for any opportunity or support that you get because it's not a given. Just mm -hmm. because you learned to play guitar and can sing doesn't mean people want to come see you or doesn't mean that uh, they will continue to do so. So if they don't know you, then they're not going to care about you. <laughs> so let them know you, uh, share more of yourself, and uh, consider social media as kind of being like a window into the behind the scenes of your music career. So uh, what's next for you? Uh, I am releasing an album early 2017 called Vinyl Child under the name Dirty Dollhouse. Available and on CD? I don't think we're going to make CDs of this. So it's really a vinyl It's experience. really going to be a vinyl experience and uh, of course available online for people who don't have record players. Um, but I recommend you get one. You should get one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm doing that. I'm continuing to write and that's pretty much it. Just hoping for the best. Gonna get out on the road a little bit more next year and keep on checking. Awesome. So the music that you heard uh, in this video, uh, Chelsea's cover of Wicked Game and the original song, which was titled Hollywood Love Song, is available via the link in the description for you to download. I hope that you learned some things from this uh, from this video and that you're all very inspired to start taking your music seriously um, and start really tapping into the talent that you have. Uh, and using it to express yourself. Uh, I got many more videos coming up, as always. Uh, thanks so much to my patrons at patreon.com slash swiftlessons for all your support. I'll be looking forward to seeing you very soon.
shots wide. 